Hey, Orange One here. We're going to be going over how to build the perfect trader and how to make money in general with that trader. Um, it kind of makes sense. The best way to make money is to do business, right? So let's go ahead and dive into it. The first thing that you want to look at is the bonuses that you get from the different cultures. The one that you want is Asari because caravans are cheaper to build. And here's really what's the, the benefit is there's less of a trade ben, uh, penalty. So all goods, whenever you trade it, um, you're going to, like in most games, have to pay more than what people are willing to pay you for things. And that difference gets smaller as that penalty gets smaller. So this immediately makes things cheaper for you to buy and uh, more expensive to sell by 10%. Um, so I'm just going to skip that. Um, here, here we go. This is an important part of making yourself perfect for being a trader is that you want bonuses that go towards it. So for example here, if your parents were urban merchants, you get um, 10 skill level and one focus point in trade. So you start with higher trade and the focus point will allow you to get trade faster, which means you can get the perks even quicker as well. There's a number of reasons that this is good. Um, so then the next, if we're looking here, if we're going through all of these, uh, something that boosts your, um, your um, I believe it's your social is what you want. Yeah, so if you're looking on the left side here, social, this will help trade. So if you're trying to make um, that social super high, you can kind of look over there and it looks like the best one for this is your aptitude with numbers so you get even more trade bonus um, right here you can see that focus point um, being applied to trade which is what we want and then so we've got a number of different things that you can do here the one that really is going to make you do better at um, trade is right here um, Myself, I did this because I wanted to be able to do some fighting in my in my game. So this is totally up to you. If you want to be like, no, I'm focusing mostly on being a merchant and I don't really do want to do much fighting, go for this. Otherwise, if you feel like, hey, I want to I want to like kill some people every once in a while and be able to hit people, um, this is a good one. Uh, it's changed a little bit since I actually played the game, the bonus there, but this is good and then let's see yeah none of these are going to give you anything so this is just up to personal preference really um honestly anything that gives me experience with a bow i would do i think i ended up going with this one um if you want to do some throwing though that's pretty good and then this is like more for melee but if you're being a trader like me, that's not the most important thing. Um, obviously, <laughs> um, that... Oh, actually, I thought the caravan would be the best move here. Um, it's actually, it's pretty good because you get um, more leadership, but if you go for the workshop, you get even, even more trade bonus, so that's even better. And then if we're looking here, you can get a little bit more social. Uh, which is probably going to be better because that will get you that extra social uh, bonus, which again, if you've got more social, that makes this level up even faster. So you've got extremely high social, extremely high trade. So you got like essentially the ideal benefits if you go, uh, sorry, urban merchant, uh, aptitude for numbers, market and caravan series, road with the scouts, invested in workshop, and organized to um, go with some travelers. So that should, you know, and this is also personal preference. I wouldn't play with these settings myself. You can see in my Let's Play, I, I put it to realistic da damage, but the purpose of the tutorial, we're just going to go with the default. Um, so I'm just going to skip over the tutorial. I don't really want that. Time is of essence. Sorry, family. You got to do what you got to do, right? Um, so basically, what I would recommend is once you've built this, um, let's just take a second to look at our character. 
if you look here, we already have um, the ability to get some perks. I personally like Wholesaler because that's really what you're going to be trading if you're going the trade route. Um, now, for the other perks, I personally am going to go Caravan Master because I want to invest in Caravans because the Sari have that bonus and I want them to compound. Um, same thing here, you can kind of see how this is going. It's basically Caravan and Workshop bonuses. Now, Workshops do get you a ton of money and if you're trying to game the system, investing in, I think right now, um, the hardwood workshop makes a ton of money pretty much everywhere um and you can see so what i would do if i was doing caravan build is i would go here there um here caravans versus vi villagers so if you're boosting the vill the amount of caravans going on i'd actually go for that personally and then every profitable caravan obviously i'd go for that and then tariff, I'd go for that, so on and so forth. You know, you, you, you pick one and you go with it. You either go caravans or you go um, workshops with most, most of these um, abilities. And I would go insurance plans because, again, you're going with caravans. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure what I would do for this. I would probably go with the stuff that's more bulk. This is like the more rare stuff. I'd go more bulk because that tends to sell better. Um, you get less of a price change when you're selling things at markets. You, you basically, if you're trading rare goods, you're going to have to trade at multiple different cities so that you don't get the same price decrease. Bulk, it's pretty easy to just go from point A and point B and sell all of it, and you're fine. Um, and then you don't really have much of a choice here. It just kind of gives you those when you get there. Um, so yeah, those are the perks. Uh, what I would recommend doing is, uh, I'm sorry, we're, I'm just going to skip over that. What I would recommend doing is going to one of the cities in the Empire and playing one of the board games to get started with trading. Um, you have a little bit of cash to do this with. You got a thousand dinars. You're gonna wanna spend a little bit on that to recruit some people. This city, I've only got two possible recruits. Um, you're gonna wanna recruit up to essentially your capacity as soon as you can, slash have some stuff to trade. But if you want money to be doing that trading with, I'd recommend going to a tavern. Uh, the Empire has this game. Um, I'm not going to play a whole game right here, but if you sit on the seat right here and you talk to this headmaster, you can, um, if you change the, if you set the difficulty to the hardest thing and you bet 500 and play a game, you can make 500 pretty quick. Um, that being said, it is, you could also lose 500 and you're starting off with a whole lot less money. So that's up to you. If you want to go pure trading, I wouldn't do this. If you want to just play a little bit of this game named Tablet, I would I would check it out. I would play the game maybe a little bit once as a test game or twice as a test game, and if you're liking it, then go for it. It's like a completely like you're not gonna get captured or anything way to make a quick five hundred. Now, actually for buying actual goods, uh we're going to want to look at either a town or a village and there's this little trade option here next to the purse if you click on that then you can say hey i want to buy either with these arrows right here and then if you're like hey i want to buy that shield then you'd click done if you're like no i don't want to do that you can reset and it brings it back or you can hit cancel and it exits you out of the menu kind of makes sense it said the transaction was canceled there um as a you know that there's that which lets you do it one by one or you can click on the item and then you can move this over which makes it just go a little bit quicker you can click here individually um <laughs> i actually haven't even clicked on that button before that was kind of random um and then you can buy and equip it if it's something that is an equipable item 
for example, the sickle, I can equip that and then it just gives it to me. Or I can be like, nope, I don't want to do that. I let's let's put that back. No take back, sorry. <laughs> um, so something to keep in mind here, if you are doing like what I recommended buying in bulk, is if you look here at the grain as I buy those, look the how the value that doesn't change. Um, let's just undo that for a second. If I go to something that's much rarer, if I go to like jewelry, look how much that that each time I buy it, it goes up by ten or I think it's a little bit more than 10, but those rare goods, they, when you're trading them, you only want to unload them one at a time. The grain, this is actually not a good place to buy grain. I could go buy grain for as low as like seven or eight um, denars, and then I could sell it here, and you've essentially doubled the, uh, your profit but then if you're being a bulk trader, you're going to have another expense, which is, which is horses. And you don't have to pay anything for the horses besides this upfront cost. Um, and also something to keep in mind is that mules. And um, I'm not seeing them right here, but I think it's... I'll, I'll find it. There's one other horse. It's not the step horse. It's like the... It begins with an S as well. It's not a saddle horse. But they give you, um, I believe it's a hundred uh, more capacity. So you've got your carrying capacity up here. And so you can't carry over it. If you remember earlier here when I was like, that's by all the butter. It's like your carrying capacity is ex exceeded. It will slow you down dramatically and this flashes, right? So if you have more horses, you can carry more. If you're going to be a bulk trader, which you really should be, if you're asking me it's a lot easier, um, then you're going to need some mules and the other horses as well. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll put it in text, if not an image of them. So yeah, the prices change here in cities, but if I go to like a village, like this little village right here, and I go to buy products from them, uh, the cheese is not a good example of this. Uh, this is a pretty good one. If I keep on buying this, the price should change. Okay, it did not change there. Or it shouldn't change. So as you saw there, I can buy all of their product and it won't change the price like ever in a village. So you can take advantage of that. So like, you know those rare goods that we were talking about? The like, um, what should we call it? Like silver or like um, jewelry and stuff like that. If you can buy that in bulk, do it. So I'm not really seeing any right now here, but I know that there's a couple down here of um, like there's a silver ore. I remember seeing that recently or like desert horses. You can buy desert horses down here and then you can go trade up north. And of course, they don't have desert horses up there, so they'll they'll pay for it, you know. Um, where is it right now? Of course, when I actually am looking for it, I can't find it. There's like a... It might be different on this game too. It looks like it's possibly a little bit different in what they're producing. But yeah, you can see that there's local goods that you can't find other places, like the desert horses or like the step horses. Um, and yeah, like these guys right here those items if you buy those local things and then you bring them across the map you'll make a good amount of money like it's a pretty solid way to um make money i mean by and large get it because we're buying in large quantities by and large if you buy low like this um and and if i took that and i was paying eight there and then i go over here and i sell high then I would be I would be making a good amount of cash, and it, you can imagine how it just compounds as you get more horses and a larger um, party, essentially. So there's also this thing called trade rumors, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of hard to see on this game. I'm just gonna jump over to my let's play right now, so you can kind of see it. Um, these trade rumors they get better as you get better at trading. You get more info from them. 
and you, your perks actually give you more trade info as well. I'll show you what I mean by that very soon. So if I go, if I click on this and I go to trade, this character um, knows about some prices because I've been to some cities recently of like, hey, like look at this item here. Um, it's appearing as green under its uh, cost right there. So it's 42% cheaper than average. So this is a pretty good place to buy wool. And then I could bring it all the way down to the Asari territories and sell it for a good, a good amount of profit there. Because I remembered those prices, apparently. Uh, your remembered prices, though, don't change. They say they stay totally static. So um, the, the economy is going to change. Like maybe there's a caravan that drops off some wool here right before I get there. And my price that I thought the wool was going to be is no longer the price because it's changed dynamically, right? So you have to be careful about that. You don't want to trade super far away with things like that. Um, unless you're willing to wait around or find another city to drop off of those goods at. Um, yeah, the trade rumors are super unreliable, but there's three ways to get them, and you can play the game just relying on them, and it's totally fine. Um, supplementing with some quests, because there are uh, multiple que uh, quests where you can um, help them with trade or, like, Escort a caravan. It's a good, easy way of getting reputation, and um, it'll. These are the people that you're gonna want to use to set up caravans as well, which I'll explain in just a little bit. Um, okay, so to get rumors, you can either a visit the city and go to the trade menu, and it'll tell you about that stuff. Uh, b you can talk to random NPCs. This could be in a city or a village, it doesn't really matter. And then, um, basically, every every once in a while you'll get an actual rumor. Of course, I spawned super far out from an actual NPC, and his character's kind of slow. But if you go up to one of these guys, um, you should get like, Oh, hey, my cousin or my brother or someone sold some goods here. Why don't you try selling it over there as well? Okay, that dude looks like they might be a beggar, so I'm not going to go over there. Sorry, I thought that this would go back quickly. Let me just pause this for a second. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. I, I just walked up to that random woman and she told me a little bit of advice. You don't get that every time. Most of the time when you talk to villagers, I've found that they just tell you like useless stuff about NPCs and they're kind of bloated with that. I think in terms of their invent or their ability to talk about things. Um, the traders here, if you go up to them, they don't give you trade rumors. It's kind of weird. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I think that's a bug for now or we'll see if they change that, but I think they will. Um, there's a also, yeah, oh, the beggars, they also give you some information. I thought they wouldn't. And it looks like just about anybody will, even these bodyguards, yeah, it looks like all the NPCs will, can give you trade advice, which is what I was doing actually early on in the game, uh, before I had explored to multiple cities. Kind of a safe way of figuring stuff out. Um, and then there's one other option, which is talking to caravans. So this caravan right here is under attack from some bandits. Um, I'm actually supposed to be protecting them, but... I want to just find a caravan. Let's just move out of here. We're gonna just try and find one. Sorry, that <laughs> that one caravan. Yeah, I'm doing a terrible job. I get it. I'm just trying to find an example of a caravan for people to see. Uh, let's just keep on going. We'll, we'll find one soon, I promise. But yeah, basically, if you talk to those caravans that travel between cities, you should uh, be able to um, get some profit. Are any of these guys... No, this is like all an army. They're not... They're not in it. So basically, yeah, you just walk up to a caravan and talk to them. I'll try again and see if I can find one, and I'll show you. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. You see this caravan right here? If I go up to them and I talk to them, I can um, directly trade with them. 
and get some goods from them, which you, you could do that. Or really what they're useful for is um, they can give you some advice on things. And then that will actually, if you look at your items, um, your character keeps track of that stuff. So they'll know about prices that these people tell them about. So that's another way of getting trade rumors. Like I said, though, the rumors can be off by a pretty sizable margin. So sometimes you'll actually lose money doing a trade that they recommend. So one strategy that I would recommend is finding three cities and just traveling between the three and knowing what buys and sells high and low. And give yourself some risk tolerance. Don't invest purely in one thing. You know, diversify all the different things. Maybe buy some units of grain and some of uh, like dates or whatever to go trade at this one city so you've got multiple things. And then if it's not a good deal, don't trade it. Hold on to those goods and try and find another place you can drop them off at or just keep on going in your circuit. And I would do that until you get to the point where you've got 15k. Now, you might ask yourself, what's special about 15k? You can buy a, a caravan, or for a similar amount, you can buy some of these um, these business businesses, like this weaver here. If I go and talk to this weaver, I can get. I think I can buy a workshop, and you can also set up like caravans. So if I talk to this guy, I can say, "Hey, I want to buy a caravan," and like, "Oh, that costs like 15k." It's like, okay, sure. Um, so you can set those up, and then if you look at my clan page, I've actually done that before, and I'm starting to make some money. So you can see that Blag, he's making a pretty good amount of profit there. And so we're starting to make some money off of him, and you can have a ton, a ton of these caravans going. And... Um, it, it, it did lose a bit of money, though. You do have to keep in mind, before they figured out their trade routes, They he was losing about 180 a day. So you have to have a little bit of extra money to work with. But now he's actually making enough to support my party, plus some. So if I get a couple caravans going and a couple workshops going, it's going to grow really fast for us, you know? Um, I think that's almost everything. Oh yeah, there is there is one other thing that I would recommend. If you want to be a, a little bit of a bandit, one of the best options is attacking a caravan. Like if you talk to a caravan, and you could be like, hey, um, they'll tell you where they're going and what they're selling. And so you can you can know what their destination is and then you can just straight up attack them. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have the troops actually to do so. But if you attack them and take the goods that they're trying to sell and you drop it off at that place that they're selling, you'll make a good amount of money. You can do the same thing with raiding villages. You can get like sheep from this village and then go take sheep somewhere else to go sell. The nice thing though about the caravan is that they walk it over to where you're going to drop it off anyways. And oftentimes, especially in the late game, if you're at war with someone, there's a hostile... Uh, faction, you can just go snipe their caravans and then go trade with who they're gonna go trade with. It's, you know, kind of a sneaky way to make a little bit of money. Um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. Thank you for joining me. This has been Orange One.